Hello and welcome in. Mark here, <clears throat> aka the Markster. My voice is a little bit hoarse this morning. Uh, this is video number 90 in the FreeCAD series. Today I'll be helping out a user on the forum who wants to cut this this gear, this inner gear, from this outer gear. Let me show you the version I'll be using today. It's a 0 0.20. One of the development builds. We're in the 0 0.20 development cycle. And this is one of the weekly builds. It's actually from a couple weeks ago. So when you run these weekly builds, you get the very latest cutting edge features and also the latest cutting edge bugs occasionally. But that's how you that's how you fix the bugs. You put them out there and you test them and you get them fixed. So what he wants to do is cut this inner gear from this outer gear this wire filter I'm gonna delete that and that's another macro I'll be covering that macro in, in a later video delete that delete the binder this file is available on the forum this is my starting point I'll put a link to the forum discussion in the description So what I'm going to suggest, he wants to offset it a little bit so that it's bigger for some clearance to fit the uh, the other part into this outer gear. So he wants to cut this out, but offset it a little bit for some clearance. And he also wants some fillets in these corners here. I believe they're in these corners is where he wants them. So what I'm suggesting to do is create another body and put the second gear into that other body, fill it these edges, offset them, and then do the cut in part workbench. Cut one the other body from from this body. So let's go to part design. Let's create a body. And we need to move this gear into this body. I believe we can drag the gear to the part. And that didn't work. Let me undo that. It brought the other gear out too. Let's try moving it. Let's put this body into this part. So now both bodies are in that part container. Which is really, we don't need this part container. It's, it's not necessary. But it's here. Let's try right click. Move object to other body. Nope. Features cannot be moved. Some of the selected features have dependencies in the source body. So FreeCAD is not being cooperative. Let's right click this toggle body active. So this body is active. Yours won't be red. I have in my preferences I have the active body with a red background just to make it more obvious. Select the gear we want to move. Edit menu. Duplicate selected. We only want gear 001. And it put the new gear 
in the correct body. So now we can just delete that one. So we've achieved the same effect. It took three tries, but we got it. So now we'll hide this first body. And we're going to fill at these edges. So I'm going to select these edges. I'm holding down control key. But I'm in blender navigation mode down here. You might be in a different navigation mode. I don't know all of these modes. So I don't know if control is necessary for multiple selection in all these different modes. Or for Blender, you hold down the control key. Otherwise, you would end up deselecting the other edges. I know this is very basic stuff. We're going to be using the PD Wrapper macro in this video. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So now let's click the tool here to make the fillets. I'm going to leave it at the default. One millimeter. That's 0.5 there. What that looks like. But I'm going to leave it at the default. And the user can change it if he wants to. Okay. And the next thing is to do the offset. And for that we're going to use the PD Wrapper macro. Before using PD Wrapper, since it's a macro, you have to install it. So you go to Tools menu. Add-on manager. If you're using 0 0.19, the add-on manager looks a little different, but it's basically the same. Just make sure you're in the macro section and go down to the P's, PD wrapper. That stands for Port Design Wrapper. And what it's designed to do is the primary purpose is to allow you to use solids created in other workbenches inside your Port Design body. But it can also wrap Port Design objects and do things like offsetting, 3D offsetting. 3D scaling, enabling or disabling those features. So it's, it's got a ton of features, but it's also really complicated to use. I'm not going to sugar, sugarcoat that. So once you have it selected, then up here you'll see install. I've got uninstalled because I already have it installed. But you'll click install there. And then the first time you run it, we'll go here to Macro Menu, Macros, and it'll appear here. I've got a bunch of macros. It'll appear here as pdwrapper.fcmacro. Possibly the PND will be uppercase for you and the W. but it'll have that FC macro extension. This file you see on the bottom here, the pi file, that gets created by the macro the first time you run it. It'll ask you to create that file. Tell it yes, create the file. You don't run the pi file. 
if you try to run that, it's not going to do anything. You run FC Macro. The pie file is used by FreeCAD when you open a document that contains one of these objects. FreeCAD will import this file so that the object can work. If you don't make the PI file when you open a document containing one of the PD wrapper objects, that object will be broken. It will not function properly. So you must create this file the first time you run the macro. When you uninstall the macro, if you do it with the uh, add on manager, you need to manually come back in and delete this PI file. And you can do that uh, right here with the delete button. You could delete both of these right here to uninstall a macro. So we're going to select the fillet and execute the macro. It's going to ask which type of macro, which type of PD wrapper to make. We have a bunch of different options in here. And we'll talk about these in some future videos. For now, we're going to use the additive. And it's going to ask which feature should come before the PD wrapper object in the body. And that's going to be the fillet. So the, the wrapper is going to be the last object in the body. Right away we see something has not gone as expected. We don't have the fillet. We have the, uh, the gear. So what we want to do here, select the PD wrapper additive object. And in the data tab in the property view, we want to set shape management from automatic to manual. Let me get the magnifier on that. Shape management from automatic to manual. Shape management manages the creation of the two shapes associated with all of these part design features. We'll talk more about those in a later video. Right now we're concerned with what I call the tip shape. So down here in the properties we have a tip shape section and this is the tip shape recipe. This is how this tip shape is created. I told you this was a complicated macro. So what it does, it takes the base fillet, the base object, the gear, and fuses it with the fillet. So gear and fillet get fused together. And down here where it says use tip base add subshape, that I think needs to be true. And false. So these needed to be swapped around. There are other, other ways we could accomplish the same thing. We can set the fuse operation to none and the tip base. We can come here and clear this. So now we're only using the fillet as the shape. Looks like it set this back to false, but that's okay. It's, 
it's looking like we want it. So we've got the PD wrapper using the tip shape that we want. Now we need to do the 3D offset, which is something else the PD wrapper macro can do. And that's the purpose of using the macro today is for this 3D offset. Now you notice there's a lot of properties in here. By default, the offset properties are hidden and the scale properties are hidden. And that's just to remove some of the clutter where you don't need it. So we need to set show offset props to true to show these offset properties. So that's false. There are also mesh properties. We can use the PD wrapper to bring a mesh object directly into part design. We're going to set mesh, we're going to set offset props to true. And now we have pattern offset, which we're not interested in today. We'll talk about that in future videos. Pattern shape. And we have tip offset. That's what we're interested in. So the tip shape and the pattern shape are two shapes that part design solid features have. The tip shape is what you're seeing right now. The pattern shape is what's used, for example, when you make a polar pattern or a linear pattern or a mirror or multi-transform. The pattern shape is what's copied, but we're not making patterns today, so we're not worried about pattern shape. So here with tip offset, we can offset the base object, which was that gear originally, or the tool object, which is the fillet, or the shape object, which is the result of the boolean operation. So we'll use a shape offset. Set that to one. So this is one millimeter three-dimensional offset. To me that's a little bit too much. So let's try point five. That's better. Let's try point two. So this is always going to be millimeters. I haven't tried this in imperial mode, but these are presumed to be millimeters. So now we can do the cut. And we'll do the cut in part workbench. So let's go to part workbench. Select the body in the tree. Okay, you select your base object first. The order of selection is critical when you're doing the cut. Select the body in the tree, not here in the in the 3D view. Select it in the tree, the body first, and then the cutting tool. Base first, then cutting tool, and then we'll do the cut. Let's check this, check geometry here. Hopefully, we've got no issues. If it does, it still might work. You can still try it. 
Yeah, there are some issues. With these faces here. Let's see if the fillet had the issues. Fillet was good. It's probably the offset has the issues. <clears throat> yes. So the offset is causing a problem. But it still might work. So you still might be able to get a good print out of this. Let's look at the original the original gear. So if this is the object correctly modeled that's going to be inserted into this new object we created with this cut, then this gives you a pretty good idea of what your fit is going to look like. Of course, this is really zoomed in. Keep in mind when you're 3D printing, you're not going to have a perfect print, right? There's always a little bit of tolerance involved with this 3D printing technology. The accuracy is only within some fraction of a millimeter. Depends on the printer, depends on the material, etc. The, the printing type, and probably your 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 uh, slicer and the settings in there have something to do with that too. But it looks like it'll have nice uh, plenty of uh, plenty of clearance there. You might have to experiment some notice something else here with the offset it's sticking up above the surface because it's a three-dimensional offset which also means it's sticking further into the object than before Probably one millimeter since that was, well, it was half, what was the offset? Half a mill, uh, two tenths. So it's sticking in on the other side by the same amount, I would guess. Let's see if we can make a mesh out of this. <clears throat> we'll go to mesh design. Create shape, create mesh from shape. Do this with the cut selected. We use a standard default. We'll hide the cut. And we have a tool inside Mesh Design, Analyze, Evaluate and Repair Mesh. Down at the bottom here, all test together. You see that all above test together. Analyze. So we've got no errors here. That's great news. When you don't have any errors here, you're probably going to be able to get a good print. So now you can select this, Cut Mesh Object, and from the Meshes menu, Export Mesh. Create your STL file here. This is better than selecting Cut, and from the File menu, Export. Because we're able to use the different options in Mesh Menu. We can choose Mephisto or NetGen or, or Gmesh 
and all the different options there. So you have plenty of options to create exactly the right mesh. And once created, you're able to run the diagnostics on the mesh object. All that gets skipped when you just simply select your solid and export from the file menu. So create your mesh, test it, export from the meshes menu. That's going to do it for this video. Hopefully it's going to help this user get his shredder back online. Those are handy tools to have and today you really need you really need a shredder. Those people will steal your identity. Thank you for watching. We'll talk more about this speedy wrapper macro. You, you saw a glimpse of the wire filter. That's another one that's it's on the to-do list to make some videos. But I wanted to introduce you to PD Wrapper today. Help this other user out. And I think we'll accomplish that, hopefully. So I'll see you in my next video.